Toads uh, are on tour at the moment. Tonight they're playing the Hanley Victoria Hall. To say the least, they've had some mixed reviews of their shows around the country, so a bit earlier today I asked Julian Copin for his version of how things are faring for their new lineup. Um, it's going really well. I'd say it was the best group so far. <laughs> You've always said that. <laughs> yeah, I have to, that's just to keep them, that's the diplomacy side of me. <laughs> Ronnie, the new bass player, is making Gary work harder, so the rhythm section is amazing at the moment. It's good to have Balfi back, yes. even though it's strange to see somebody play keyboards the way he does, which is kind of like, like he's reading Look and Learn at the same time. So. <laughs> I remember that. How did, how did David actually come back? I mean, what was the situation um, that he returned in? I think he sneaked in. You weren't looking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, what happened was, we knew that something was wrong. <laughs> I knew that something was wrong. You were getting some mixed reviews, weren't you? Yeah. yeah. No, that, actually, that wasn't that. I'm, like, I'm quite willing to say that most of the time when there's, a, when there's a line of change, it is a fault of mine. But the most challenging thing that, that I found was to bring Balfi back in, because there wasn't that, that friction. Like, Troy is, is a kind of a source of friction for me, but not as much as, the, as he should be, because he... He didn't have so he didn't have that kind of uh, other character there to yell at me as well. And I know that in actual fact I work best when people are saying no. Mm. And Balfi provides the no, and he helps Troy provide some more no sort of thing. Do you think that the the lineup that you have now, the feel you have now, is something that will last longer than the many other forms of teardrop explosives that we see? Yeah, I think by design we're actually unconsciously trying to keep it together. I like the people in the group. Yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm making quite an effort. It's hard, you know, I find it quite hard, I find it quite hard to to get on with people and be with people all the time. But then again, you know, I found that on the British tour when it was becoming too much, I'd just go and sit on my own for a while, so I was okay. Have a little sulk in the <laughs> Yeah, get petulant. Talking of rows and things, I, I read the other day that uh, you've had a little bit of a bust up with uh, a major television programme, <laughs> Top of the Pops. Uh -huh. that you and they are not getting on at the moment. No. Is it a misunderstanding or something? What, what's it all no, about? No, it's a kind of, it's just Julian Cope frivolity, working against them as usual. They just heard that I was off my head <laughs> when we did what Top of the Pops. And uh, they weren't too happy about it because it was in a paper. Mm. But then again, it's just me being flippant in papers. You say so many things. I mean, I, I don't know how many interviews I've done in the past year. And the amount of times I've been misquoted. I just, I've said so many times, I just wish people could write in black and white irony and people just don't seem to get it. Yes. They just, they say, he said that. I will, you know, I think it's just perversity in writers saying, he said that, I can actually get him because it, it's a quote, but they can't say what intonation you have behind That's it. the great thing about radio, at least now. So, yeah, you know, I mean, you know the way I'm saying it. Do you want to put the record straight then, that it was a joke, whatever you said? Well, it was a kind of joke, yeah. I mean, we're always off our head. You know, we're always like, when I say I'm off my head, I mean, like, I've been off meds since I was 12, and, I, and, and it's nothing to do with, you know, with being drunk or drugged up to the eyeballs. Um, I'm just more bewildered by life in general. It, it, it annoys me because, um, like, I haven't got time to keep explaining what, what I mean. If, if people don't, don't, don't get exactly what I mean, I'd like rather they interpreted it the way they get it and get something out of it that way. Mm. You know, um, like, I'm basically just quite a kid in lots of ways, and unfortunately, my job is in the position of a child, sort of thing. So every so often I've got to be quite adult about it. <laughs> Let's be adult and talk a bit about your involvement with um, another half of your life, so to speak, the whole zoo empire, whatever we don't want to call it. I mean, is that as important to you as the teardrops now? It's, yeah, kind of. Well, it, in as much as creating an entity is, is always, always been the most important thing. The last single Zoo put out was January 80, which was Treason, the original Treason. The follow-up is the new Wild Swan single, which I think is great, which is out at the moment, which is going really well. So it's quite a big deal to follow up Treason when you haven't done it you know, for two years. Yeah. Then there's the Zoo compilation which is coming out, which is us, the Bunny Man, various permutations of those groups. There's a lot of things. Mm. Yeah, we're um, doing a lot of work. Mm.